We have reached the critical game, the win and in against the Philadelphia 76ers. Why shifting expectations have led to a disappointing finish, a bit of long-term perspective, and what the Magic need to do in the future, plus why the Magic can win. They can still win. I believe it. We'll get to that on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is April 11th, 2024. My name is Philip Rostenreich. I'm the expert and site editor over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, we're going to take a long-term perspective on the events of the week and where the Magic might finish in the playoffs. Why it's okay to be disappointed and still consider this season a success and what that means for the team moving forward. Or, you know, I think we've, I think we could say we've learned some things that, that we need to learn. We'll get to that. Plus how the Orlando magic beat the Philadelphia 76ers and put all this depression behind them. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first we want to thank you again for making locked on magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload, we truly appreciate you making locked on magic part of your day every day. Remember there's a great locked on podcast covering every single team, in the NBA Just search for locked on and the team you're looking for the locked on podcast network. It's your team every day. This week has been depressing. Like, um, if you're a Magic fan, uh, if you're on the Magic, it it has not been a fun week. Um, we spent Sunday night celebrating and Sunday night feeling very excited and very good about this team. They were sitting in third in the Eastern Conference for the first time in a ver- since December. And it felt like the world was truly in front of them. This team had truly arrived early. And here we are five days later. And it feels like we are in the bottom of an endless pit. Two or two losses have dropped the magic from third to fifth. And because we know what the schedule looks like with the Philadelphia 76ers suddenly surging and the Milwaukee Bucks the prospects of avoiding the play-in have diminished greatly. And look, I'm not going to say, you know, we knew this schedule was going to be tough in August. We, we knew that this was going to be difficult. I was expecting a one and two road trip. And look, we may still get that. At the end of the day, what we've seen from this team, what we know from this team entering the week is the magic control their own destiny. If Orlando wins on Friday, So much of this worrying, yes, the Magic will not be the three seed, but if the Magic win on Friday, they are guaranteed a top six seed. They are guaranteed to be in the playoffs, which is so important for this team. And if they do not accomplish that with where they have sat in the Eastern Conference for most of the season, and certainly with the way that they have played, they are 19-9 and since the All-Star break. 19-10 and now, I think, actually. They have, or since the trade deadline, excuse me. Um, the fact that the Magic have sat in a comfortable position away from the playing tournament, and now this last week, a losing streak at the worst time of the year could drop them out of it. It's rightfully frustrating. It's rightfully disappointing. There have been a lot of people, and, and I'll be one of them, that would like to remind you that this all feels like a dream still. It all still feels like a dream to, to be in this conversation, to be in this spot, to still have a shot at home court advantage, by the way. It's not impossible. But I also believe expectation shift. A team tells you what they are capable of doing throughout the course of the season. And whatever your preseason expectations are, you still hold them to that. You still evaluate the season compared to those. But when a team tells you they can do more, you expect more of them. So yes, we celebrated this a few weeks ago. 
game 83. Game 83 is happening. The Magic have accomplished that bare bones goal of reaching the play in tournament, of playing postseason basketball. And considering that they haven't done that in any capacity since 2020, that's an accomplishment. Personally, before the season, I was, I wasn't say I wouldn't say pessimistic, but I was, I felt realistic saying we're gonna win that, that this team was gonna win 38 games. I really doubted the offense. Um, but I said they're gonna win 38 games and may, be in the 9-10 game. Well, guess what? They are guaranteed not to be in the 9-10 game. They're guaranteed to be in at least the 7-8 game, whether they're heading to Miami or hosting that game, they're guaranteed to 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 be to have two cracks at making the playoffs. If it comes to that, it hopefully doesn't. I got two cracks to avoid it too. And to me, I, I would say just based on that, this season is a success. But I would also say that that isn't enough anymore. That we might be able to sit back and say, oh, that that, that makes this season a success. It's not a failure in, in any respect. Missing the playoffs would be a failure at this point, but we'll get to that. But things have changed. We have seen how good this team can be. We have seen they're the third best defense in the league. We've seen them compete and beat the best teams in the league. We've seen them get humongous wins. We have seen them show us their future. We've seen Paolo Bancaro become an all-star. We have seen Jalen Suggs be an all-defensive team player. Franz Wagner be an ace attacking the basket. We have seen what this team is capable of doing. They have raised their own standard. And so while, yes, the season has been a success and it has been a dream season, do not forget the good feelings and the good vibes of this season and all that comes with it. But it can also be disappointing. It can also leave you wanting more. And that's a good thing too. Because now we're holding this team to a higher standard. This team has shown us they can compete for home court advantage in the Eastern Conference. They could be a top four team in the East. Well, guess what? That's now the expectation for next year. That's now the expectation entering the offseason, regardless of what happens this year in the playoffs. The Magic should be hosting a playoff series next year. I'll I'll say that. I'll set that expectation now. I have no reason not to believe that they are not in a comfortably a top six team next year and not a team that is competing for the four seed like they were all of this year until this week. They've told us that this is what they're capable of doing. And so to sit here and be wringing our hands and worried about even making the top six and avoiding the play in, that's disappointing. And it's disappointing, of course, because we have seen in the last two games against Houston and against Milwaukee, we saw against Charlotte three games ago, or whatever many games, last Friday. We, we saw against Portland this team not play up to its standards. Over the last two weeks, we've seen this team play only two games that meet this magic standard, this raised level, this raised expectation. And that is unacceptable. If you lose a game or you played your butts off, and, and the Magic seem to think they did Wednesday against Milwaukee, I, I, I don't. I, I think that they were really lax and not really in tune with the game plan. And, you know, the turnovers hurt and made that deficit maybe larger than it was. Um, so maybe the Magic weren't as bad as the score looked, but they never made a push in the second half. They were not good that entire game. They can never get their defense back. That's not Magic basketball. I don't know who that team was. That's not the Magic. But we've gotten to the point where we can say that. We've gotten to the point where when it, where, where it, 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 we've gotten to the point where we expect this team to be better. And guess what? There is no turning back from that. Once you've reached a level where you expect to win every night, where you have a standard to play to, where you're not just kind of figuring things out on the fly. When you reach that level, that's when you've made it. Or that, or that's not, not when you made it because you got to make it, but that's when you know things have changed around here. 
things have changed around here. And if there was anything, you know, there's there's a few things the Magic needed to do this year. They needed to make the playoffs, get into a seven-game series, see where their weaknesses are. We'll get to that in a minute. The other thing they needed to do was to raise that standard, to tell us what they're capable of doing, what their future can look like, and give us proof of what that is. I will repeat this. This has been a successful season. And I'm not going to let four bad games change my mind on that. The Eastern Conference is unusually tight this year. Um, You know, last year, 46 wins. What was uh, I'm actually going to look this up real fast. Give me me a sec here. Uh, Sorry, I'm going to look this up because it's worth looking up. Last year, 46 wins. The magic of 46 wins would have gotten them the six seed comfortably. Brooklyn won 45. Orlando's at 46 right now. 47 would have been the five. It changes every year. The Magic could have the exact same record next year and be the three seed. That's that's how crazy the league can be. It's been an unusually tight year in the Eastern Conference. But we know now where they want to slot, where they can slot, where they can place themselves. And so now it's on them to make good on it this year and live up to it next year. We are going to talk a little bit about the future, what we've learned about the Magic and what it means for the team's future. Plus, we'll get to keys to tonight's game against the Sixers. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Stitch Fix. Do you know that instant confidence boost you get from an outfit that makes you look really good? Well, that's what you can get with Stitch Fix. Easily upgrade your wardrobe this year with a professional stylist who helps you find new on-trend favorites that will work for you. You just give your stylist your size, style, and budget preferences. You order boxes when you want and how you want. No subscription required. And they send you Five just-for-you pieces plus outfit recommendations and pro styling advice. You keep what works and send back the rest. Your stylist always sends just right pieces and the fit is on point. Citrix makes it all so easy. I don't like to shop. I know you don't either. Balls are dead anyway. Um, They save you time and effort by delivering it directly to you. Plus, you get outfits that make you look and feel really good too. And if you don't love something, just send it back. Shipping returns and exchanges are always free. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash locked on. That's stitchfix.com slash locked on. Stitchfix.com slash locked on. Today's episode of Locked on Magic is also brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With more than 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins like the Magic are trying to do tonight. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fits only available to U.S. customers. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Day 24-7 streaming channel. We all like to watch sports. We all want the best analysis. And frankly, you're not going to get the best analysis of the big stories of the day from the national guys. The national guys are just going to sit there and shout and yell at each other and not really make the kind of analysis and points that you want. You want the local experts. So for uh, so if you're trying to get the latest sports news, Locked on Sports Day 24-7 streaming channel is there for you with the biggest stories without all the screaming and with the experts who actually know what they're talking about because they follow their teams religiously, just like I do. Locked on Sports Day brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, 
your team every day. You've heard me say this a million times, um, and, and I, I've kind of brought this back throughout the course of the week because, like, look, nothing else matters right now except winning. We are in April. We are a week, you know, the season ends Sunday. The playoffs postseason is just around the corner. All that matters is you win. If the Orlando Magic win 150 to 149 on Friday night, I will not care about the defense. This is a defensive team. I do not care if the Magic give up 125 points as long as they score 126. And that's how it's going to be the rest of the year. All that matters right now are results. And so people kind of yelled at me in the comments about this. The future is not important right now. We're going to talk about the future here in a minute, but the future is not important right now. What matters is results. What matters is winning because we are in the playoff chase. We are trying to get that six seed. We're trying to stay alive right now. All it's going to take is one win to guarantee that we host a play-in game, which would be huge. Um, all it's going to take is you know, a win Friday to make sure that we're in a playoff series and we get some time off because the, the, it sure looks like this team needs a little bit of a breather, a little bit of a break right now. Um, but having said that, I will still maintain and I will still tell all of you that this season is not about this season. This season is still about figuring out what this team needs and what this team is capable of. And so again, in that respect, this season has been a success because we can clearly see they can be one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. I know Philadelphia was down this year because of the injury to Embiid that you know lasted forever. Um, and so they're going to climb back into that top three. They're going to push, push everyone down a spot. But the Magic should feel like they're knocking on the door of competing with that group. Uh, if they're not with the Milwaukee, Boston, uh, Philadelphia group when everyone's healthy, they're in that four, five, six group with New York, with Cleveland, and then like the future of the East, because Miami looks shaky right now. The future of the East. Milwaukee, Boston, and, and, and Philadelphia are competing for the title now. It's New York, Cleveland, and Orlando in that next group. And that's how they have to view things. I I, I will say, and I, I, I know that I think a lot of people believe this, the Magic have to get into the playoffs to just begin to understand what their flaws are. And, and I know I've said this a million times. The Magic don't know what they need because they need to get into a playoff series to see what they need, to see how teams defend Paolo Bancaro, to see uh, how... You see who steps up and, and what works and what doesn't in a playoff series. Um, I know a lot of people are, are, are banging on Wendell Carter and are kind of out on Wendell Carter. And I see a lot of it too. And and, and I, I've been skeptical about some things too, but I, I want to see it pr proven out in the playoffs. But, you know, we need to see it. Like we need to see that. This week, however, with the playoff intensity of these games and the pressure the match can been put under, you know, pressure makes diamonds, but, it, you know, it also reveals a lot of things. And we've seen a lot revealed about this team. We've seen a lot revealed about its depth and how, you know, the Magic don't have players who can step up. I made that point yesterday. Um, they, 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 you know, relying on Caleb Houston to start games right now is, and this is no offense to Caleb Houston, he is not a playoff player. If if he is playing in the playoffs, something has gone terribly wrong. And, you know, obviously he's playing right now because something has gone terribly wrong. The Magic, for all the scoring they bring off the bench, they lack depth. They don't have quality depth to fill in that starting lineup. Um, you know, again, it's tough. You know, maybe the Magic should have been playing Jet Howard. Maybe the Magic should trust Anthony Black a little bit more. Maybe the Magic should have gone to Gogo Vitaze. They They do have some options but they're clearly missing something. And the Magic are clearly missing the shooting to give Paolo Bancaro space to breathe because teams are already sending double and triple teams his way, especially with Franz Wagner out. These are things that we expected. You know, Paolo's probably, Paolo's seen more double teams than any almost any player in the league this year. Like he has been. The Magic have to find a way to create space for him. And... This slide this week, regardless of where the Magic finish, you know, I, I, I think we can safely say the slide the Magic have been on this week 
and the way it's setting up their playoffs and the way it's setting up their postseason. The way they have slid this week tells us so much of what this team needs. Now, like, look, obviously they need shooting. Let's we're not going to pretend there. Whether the Magic are actually interested in Clay Thompson, whether the Magic are actually interested in D'Angelo Russell, whether Tyus Jones is still the still an option, whether they're going to chase after Malik Monk with the money that they have, whether they find someone in a trade. The Magic have to find some shooting. They need to find a way to get a true point guard who can get Paolo the ball in, spot, in his spots so that he's not having to handle the ball all the time. They need... More plus defenders, to be perfectly honest. Um, they're, they're pretty, I mean, they're obviously very good defensively, but they need to find a way to make their thing. We're just not, we're just gonna outwork you. Like that's been their thing all season, and now it's they've kind of run out of gas. And teams are starting to up their intensity, and the magic haven't been able to answer. Look, this season, like I said, this season the magic did establish an identity. They did see that they have something that works. They are cooking with gas right now. They are cooking. Like, we, we have something. And, and no result this year is going to change that. The positives that, that, that were built over the course of this season, those still exist. Those are still really good things. But why we're in this position, why the Magic haven't been able to scratch out these important wins at the end, that's the question the Magic need to answer uh, because those questions carry over to the playoffs. And look, some of it is, yes, youth. They're, they're inexperienced. They're, they're feeling it. You can tell. They're feeling that pressure. So that's part of it. But we know so many of this team's flaws, and they've been able to get around it all year. The lack of shooting, they've been able to get around with, with killer defense. So what happens when they don't have killer defense? We've seen that the last two nights. And if Orlando wants to beat Philadelphia on Friday, they're going to have to defend their, their butts off. It's, there, it's just so many things. And we know what this team is capable of. We know what this team can do. Now it's about finishing the season, obviously. And beyond that, it's about Jeff Weltman finally starting to piece this roster together. I've seen a lot of people say Jeff Weltman failed this team by not making a deal before the trade deadline, which I think is ridiculous. Um, maybe he did, but this team is 19 and 10 since the, also, since the trade deadline. They have done their work. They have played well. They have maximized this roster. But that's the thing. I think we can all see, I think we can all say, wherever this team finishes this year, they have gone as far as this group's going to go. And if the Magic want to be serious about competing for the three seed, the four seed, the five seed, whatever it is next year, if they want to be serious about becoming true contenders in the Eastern Conference, they're going to have to shore this roster up and get a lot better. And that means adding shooting. That means not having so many injury-prone players who are going to be out for extended periods. Remember that those losses the Magic had in January? Those sure hurt right now. And sure, there's just a raft of injuries and illnesses that went through the team. But that double overtime game in Sacramento, that hurts. You know, a lot of those games in that stretch, they hurt right now. The Magic have to find a way to shore this roster up, add some veterans, and put themselves in a better position to finish the job that they're struggling to finish tonight. That they're struggling to finish this year. Obviously, Friday is a big one. It's winning in. We'll go through some keys to the Magic's game against the Philadelphia 76ers. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at FanDuel. If I can find my, uh, my little banner there. There it is. Um, it's playoff time. We've been talking about that a lot in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is now in full swing and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks. Win or lose. Bet on every slap shot to the home runs to slam dunks. All on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. 
What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. The Orlando Magic take on the Philadelphia 76ers tonight, Friday, April 12th. I don't know when you're listening to this. Um, at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the road in Philadelphia against the Sixers team that has reclaimed its spot. It, it's, 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 you know, play as one of the absolute best teams in the Eastern Conference. They were, what, the second or third seed in the East before Joel Embiid's injury. We had no dreams of being the third seed, and then Philadelphia, and then Embiid got hurt, and they dropped like a rock. They they really really struggled, but since Embiid's been back, the Sixers have been on a tear. They have won what five, uh, six straight games now. There are seven straight, uh, six straight games that they could finish with an eight game win streak. They have looked unbeatable. They've had a very manageable schedule, but they have looked nearly unbeatable. Joel Embiid is maximizing the minutes that he is getting. He's and in four games, he's averaged thirty minutes per game. Shot 51.4% from the floor, 45% from three, 10 free throw attempts per game, 87.5% from the line, 30 points per game on the dot. Only plus 2.8 per game, though, but that's not true because because he, he was really struggled in those first two games that he was back. But look, Embiid is, and it, you know, Embiid was my vote to be MVP before he got hurt, before he was no longer eligible to play. That dude is just a scoring machine this year. And there is very little anyone can do to stop him when he is on a roll. Wendell Carter historically has been a very good defender against him. Um, and he struggled with them. In, you know, he did. He, I, I, I remember looking at the stats in the January game, he got in early foul trouble and that helped them be get going. So the first key to this game, honestly, is Wendell Carter's got to show up. Um, everyone's got to show up, but Wendell Carter, especially, he has struggled throughout this season. Uh, statistically, obviously, he struggled, but the last two games, particularly, Wendell Carter has been a ghost, uh, and that cannot happen. Um, you know, like, look, I'm a Wendell Carter supporter. I want to see him in the playoffs. I, I, I think he is such a valuable player for this team. I think his defense is still very underrated by a lot of fans. Uh, I think that his shooting is really important for the team, but I, I do also recognize that he has some major flaws. And the way he's played this year has also revealed those flaws. He's not an above-the-rim player. And that, that's my big thing, is I think you need to be an above-the-rim player to be successful in the playoffs. But when he's locked in, he is he is really good positionally. He will you know, keep guys out of the paint. And, and his ability to defend at, at all three levels is really important for this team in the way that they play. Going up against Joel Embiid, and Embiid is questionable for the game, with the with the knee injury maintenance, um, I expect him to play. Um, uh, there's no reason he wouldn't play. They, the, the Sixers haven't played since Tuesday. Um, I expect Joel Embiid to play. I, he's listed as questionable, but the Magic are going to have to find a way to. They're not going to stop him. Slow him down, and, and that starts with Wendell Carter and his energy. If Wendell Carter plays with intensity. Everyone else is going to feed on it. Jalen Suggs, we know, is going to play hard. He's played hard the last two games. Like that, the frustrating part of the last two games is Jalen Suggs gave his all, and nobody else seemed to be along for the ride with him defensively, at least. Um, Jalen Suggs versus Tyrese Maxey is going to be a great matchup. That's going to be one the Magic have to slow down because the, you know when the Sixers beat the Magic back in January, and Bead went for thirty. The Magic worked harder to stop and beat, and then Maxi went for 30. And, and really, honestly, like I remember watching that game, and I was like, honestly, Embiid going for 30 isn't what killed them because I, I thought the Magic did a good job defending Embiid when he was in the game. A lot of this, a lot of it was just ISOs with Embiid, and the Magic could live with that. What killed them and beat them in that game was when Embiid was out of the game, Tyrese Maxi just torched them. And that's going to be the other key in this game is pace. We saw this against Milwaukee. You turn the ball over, Milwaukee was out in transition, scoring easy baskets, putting you in a hole. That's what Philadelphia did to Orlando in both previous games, the one without Embiid in December and the one in January with Embiid. Orlando made mistakes, whether it was missed shots, whether it was turnovers, and they got out and ran. And they beat them in transition. And that was a big factor in both of those games. Orlando likes to play slow. 
And I know that might still benefit Joel Embiid, that the Sixers are a team that can play both styles. But if the Magic want to keep this game close, they got to run when they can, obviously. But they've got to slow this game to a crawl. The game cannot be in the t- in the one teens. It's got to be low 100s. If it's like a 108-107 game, game, if it's under 110, I, I feel really good about the Magic's chances to, to win. Because obviously it's just it's about defense at this point. Um, Orlando has struggled defensively the last two nights. They have not played Magic defense. And look, you're not stopping Joel Embiid. The Sixers team is really, really good. Since Embiid's return, the Sixers have a 113-3 offensive rating. 113-3. Not, not that great, actually. 113-3 puts them 12th. Orlando actually, here's a here's fun thing. In April, in April, Jim Embiid came back April 2nd. In April, the Magic have a better defensive, a better offensive rating than the Sixers. In fact, in April, as poorly as the Magic have played, the Magic have the 11th best offense in the league in April. Offense ain't the problem. Philadelphia is the top defense in the league in April at 102.7. Orlando is sitting 23rd at 116. That's not Magic basketball. Magic are usually at like 110, 111. If the Magic can get back to playing their brand of defense, and obviously Philadelphia is going to make it tough, but if they could get back to playing hard-nosed physical defense, if they can hit first, they can win this game. I want to repeat this. I see a lot of doom and gloom. I see a lot of pessimism. And yes, the way the Magic have played the last week, and again, the la- really the last two weeks, it's pe- you should be, pe- I mean, I, I get it. Pessimism is warranted. They have not played their brand of basketball very much over the last two weeks. But if Orlando plays the kind of basketball that got them 46 wins, they play like they did in the first quarter against Chicago. Obviously, Chicago's not Philadelphia, but... If they play that way, they can. And frankly, they are going to win. They are capable. I believe in them. But I'll say this too. They need Franz Wagner back. Franz Wagner, the only player on the Magic's uh, injury report this uh, for this game, they need him back. Um, and, and it's not for the reason you think. Orlando has a plus four net rating with Franz Wagner on the floor. That's the best mark of all the Orlando Magic starters. And yeah, a lot of it's because he plays with the def- with the, the second unit and Jonathan Isaac. Magic have a 108.3 defensive rating. Again, that only trails Jonathan Isaac. Franz shares a, a good chunk of minutes with Jonathan Isaac. That's a big reason why the, his defensive rating is so good. But here is the number that matters. The Magic's three-man group of Paolo Bancaro, Jalen Suggs, and Wendell Carter have a plus one and a half net rating with a 108.4 defensive rating when they share the floor together. That's all minutes sharing the floor together. If you make it a four main group with Franz Wagner, so Paolo, Jalen, Wendell, and Franz as a four man group, they have a plus 6.6 net rating with a 104.3 defensive rating. To me, this does suggest that Franz Wagner has a very real impact on this defense. He is another physical defender that will take guys into his chest uh, and someone who can switch and defend anyone too. He gets a lot of steals too. He's been really good at getting steals and, and sitting in passing lanes as well. Teams are attacking Paolo Bancaro right now. So if you can put Franz, you know, if the Magic can put Franz Wagner on Tobias Harris, that's going to make life a lot easier. Um, you know, because you'll probably have You'll probably have Gary Harris, who is listed as playing, guarding Buddy Heald. Um, if you can get if you can get Paolo on the the, the Sixers' weakest offensive player, and they, they may play DeAnthony, they may start DeAnthony Melton, which will make it harder to do that. That's going to make this game a lot easier for Orlando. They need Franz Wagner back. They need Franz Wagner for the playoffs to have any type of success, because, like I said, this this team's a little bit of a house of cards. They need Franz to play on Friday if they want to win. Plain and simple. Um, I I don't know how close Franz actually is. I don't have any intel or any information on that. Jamal Mosley did say he was progressing slowly. I don't know what that means, to be perfectly honest. Um, He was out shooting. It, it, It certainly sounded like Franz, you know, 
Franz is is pushing to come back. Like he, you know, he's he's trying to come back. He knows how important these games are. Embiid is listed as questionable too. Kyle Lowry's expects is listed as questionable. I expect those guys to play. The, these games are going to be this game is going to be a fight, and the Magic cannot. You know, frankly, I care less about the opponent. The Magic have to come out ready to fight. They have to come out ready to punch, ready to punch first. Someone needs to get a technical foul because so much is on the line. They need to play with that kind of intensity and that kind of fire and that kind of emotion. And frankly, more than the defeats, more than the results, because results matter. Results are all that matter right now. More than the results, the lack of fight and intention to detail, that's what sucked about Tuesday and Wednesday. That's what was terrible about Tuesday and Wednesday. That's what made those games awful. Because they didn't play Magic Basketball. If the Magic play Magic Basketball, the physical defense, the patient, methodical offense, low turnovers, get to the foul line. It's one of the best teams to get into the foul line. If they play Magic Basketball, they can win this game. Philadelphia is a very good team. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that all is hunky dory. Orlando could play a great game, miss shots, and Philadelphia wins. I, I, I will begrudgingly be okay with that because if they play that way Sunday against Milwaukee, they will win that game and, and secure whatever they're going to secure. If the Magic play their game, they're going to win. Plain and simple. And they're capable of doing that. It's a big one, kids. It's a big one, folks. And we'll see what the Magic ultimately end up doing before we get to Sunday and the finale at the Kia Center, which will still, no matter what, will have huge, huge postseason implications for this team. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of them you selling podcasts to your podcast-enabled listening device. Relates on the Orlando Magic. Be sure to check out OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at OMagicDaily. Um, be sure also to check out my Patreon page, your Orlando Magic Hub for even uh, Orlando Magic Hub for even more Orlando Magic content. You can find that at patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. Now that you're done listening to us, be sure to check out the Lockdown Sports Day 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Day is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. That's going to do it for me today. Once again, tip-off is at 7 o'clock from Philadelphia. We will be back tomorrow on the other side of this to recap the Magic's game against the Philadelphia 76ers and what's left in the season after that. Hopefully we'll be celebrating the Magic clinching their playoff spot with a win over the Sixers. There'll be plenty of other games to get to too, so we will lay out everything you need to know ahead of Sunday's game on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Magic. But until then, for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.